Welcome back everybody. In this episode we're talking bike rack options for the Jayco camper trailers or anything really that's got a really short and compact drawbar. So first cab off the rank, I want to run through the most popular option which is a Fiamma two bike rack. But I think I've also got an option if you want to put three or four bikes on and it's a bolt-on solution. So come along as we show you how. Now anyone that's been watching our videos noticed that we recently did a four bike carrier option on our Jayco journey. I did actually do a little snippet on why it wouldn't work on the front of the Swan, but I'm all about finding solutions for things. So I went out and hunted for a four bike solution that I'm fairly certain I can get working in this very episode you're watching here. So stay tuned for that. Now let's just cover the basics off first. If you are hunting around for a bike rack, there are generally two types that you're going to be looking at. There's a tray style that you see here, and it gets its name from the fact that the bike rack supports the wheels as opposed to the frame. And now the second option is the overhead style like what we've got here. They support the bikes by the frame in an overhead projection. So the bikes actually mount to the top of the frame and they sit down underneath. And now the advantage of the tray style is obviously that you don't need to worry about the frame of your bike so much because the wheels are what is supported and strapped down onto these particular frames. So if you've got a bike with a strange or really tight frame, which we will find as part of the second option here, you don't need to worry about that so much with this particular style. Now the other advantage with these is they sit a lot lower because they're generally sitting on your drawbar. It's a lot easier to lift the bike up, load it on, and because of their design, they're generally a little bit more gracious in the width. So the bikes are generally protected by a middle bar and they're not gonna bump and rub into each other while you're in transit. So they've got a lot of advantages, but obviously the disadvantage is because of the spacing and how they all work, they don't fit in a larger configuration in a lot of these shorter compact drawbars. Now there's a few advantages with this style of frame. The obvious is a compact nature in that you can squeeze a few more bikes into the general footprint you'll have of a standard tray style rack. There are a number of disadvantages though. The first being that you're a little bit constrained by the frame type that you're trying to mount onto these. And when you start working with really small bikes, you will notice that some of the real small frames are a little bit tricky or they don't fit on the two post style mounts that you have with your overhead bike racks. But I'll get onto that once we do the installation of this and show you a few things to look out for there. Now, another disadvantage is obviously you need to reach up a lot higher to fix and mount the bikes onto the rack. And that might be a particular issue if you're mounting it onto a camp trailer or a caravan, where it's gonna be sitting a little bit higher again. The other obvious disadvantage, because the bikes are so close together, is that you will get some clashes from time to time with the frame, because you can't space the bikes out enough so that they've got a little bit of a buffer in between. And again, we'll get into that once we actually put the bikes on this rack, and I'll show you how they all fit. But let's be honest here, unless you're going to invest in a $2,000 bike rack, such as an ISI or a Grip Sport, there's going to be compromises. And if you're looking to fit more than two bikes onto the front of a Jayco camper trailer, I think this is one of the most viable paths to go down if you're trying to squeeze three or four bikes on. And I do really think this is the best area to fit bikes unless you can somehow get them onto the roof because they don't move around as much. And more importantly, you can monitor and see what's happening with all the bikes while you're traveling along. So if something does happen to become a little bit loose, you can pull over, stop, tighten it down and make sure everything's okay. When they're on the back, you can't see anything. And again, you've got that extra physics and stress of things bouncing around on the rear. So let's firstly run through the Fiamma bike rack and then we'll get back onto this. And before I put it on the drawbar, this is the Fiamma Carry Bike XL. A. And this is the best value two bike carrier, I think, on the market. You can generally pick these up on special for $250. I actually own three of these. This one I've run on the front of the Swan for years and years and years. And then I bought two secondhand ones, which I've been running one on the journey for about 18 months. And the second one I was going to try to adapt to see if I'll get two of them working on the drawbar of the journey. But as you can see, we actually changed to a larger four bike rack, which is really, really good. If you haven't seen that video, go over and watch that. It's a really, really good bolt-on solution, which again uses the same A-frame mount that we're about to use for the four bike carrier on the Swan. But getting back to this, it's a full aluminium frame. It's extremely lightweight, and it simply bolts on with these brackets 
that slide on over these tubes and then you've got your U-bolts that go in under the A-frame and secure it all down. And I've been meaning to do a video on this rack for quite some time because this comes up in conversation quite a lot. But I think it's actually quite good that we're actually showing two different examples now because we got the four bike option which could potentially work for you as well. So I'll go and mount this onto the Swan, show you how easy it is to load the bikes up and why I think it's a really fantastic bit of gear. So the tricky thing with mounting these onto a standard drawbar is working around everything. We've got the jockey wheel over here, you've got bayonets underneath, but most importantly, you've got these pins that come up to take the bed end supports that come down. And everything needs to clear itself. And we've just got enough room to fit this on, and that's why these racks work so well. So it's a simple case of centering it on the drawbar and then shifting it around and tweaking it so that you can locate it clear of these pins and also clear of the jockey wheel over here and everything that runs in between. But once you've got it bolted on, it works incredibly well. So now that we've got our clamps in place here, I'm lucky because I've actually got a footprint of where they used to sit. So I can pretty much just get it positioned exactly how it was because we've been running this for a number of years. But you'll measure it out and you could even put some little marks on if you're taking this on and off. But it's intended to be a permanent installation onto your drawbar. So once you've got it in the position that you want, it's just a case of getting these four U-bolts and sliding them up diagonally through the drawbar. On this side, you just need to work with the gas pipe that runs through to your bayonet, the bayonet itself, and obviously the clamp for the jockey wheel. But it all fits into place really, really well. Start all the 10 mil nuts on and you'll notice the threads are quite long. So I find a 10 mil deep socket works extremely well for zipping these on. And if you've got something like a, this Milwaukee wrench, that works incredibly well. Otherwise, a socket or a ratcheting spanner would also work quite well, unless you just do it manually by hand. But you just nip these down, and once you start getting close to the end of the U-bolt, just make sure you do it from side to side, side to side, so that you've got some equal stretch on the U-bolts and it's not all lopsided and off kilter off to the side. That'll keep it all nicey nice and make sure it's tightened down really, really well. So we'll just do these up. So I do all these up so that they're just not quite tight so we can make any fine tuning adjustments, measuring from front to back and center to center to make sure it's all in the right position. And then you can button it all back down. And one thing you do need to do is, if you fit these racks, is just shorten down the lever that you use to put your jockey wheel on and you can see here I just cut it off and just rounded it a little bit and it it sort of just hits most of the time. I probably need to take a little bit more off this but you do need to grind these down to shorten I think about probably about that much. So it's just one of those things in fitting the footprint of the rack on. Now the rack itself is really easy to use. You've got these foam bumpers that you can move up and down so that any contact points where the bikes are it stops them from being all scratched. And if you wanted to, you could even get some uh, pool noodles or some other foam to put in other areas. But I find these two generally work just fine. To secure the wheels down, you've got these ratchet straps that you simply put in and click through. Simple as that, don't need to really think about it. And then when you set up at camp, and this is a really good feature of this, you undo the turn knob on either side and this bar swings down out of the way so you can access the boot and get to everything you need to in there. The height of it is really good. Even in the upright position, you can slide the beds out and it doesn't clash with the bottom of the bed support. And at the same time, you can still get the support poles down and they don't hit this at all. So the whole rack is almost like it's made to go on to the front of these camper trailers. It is fantastic. So if we put this back up now, you simply lock in the little turn knobs again on both sides and then what I like to do is get the straps and tuck them in behind just like so and that makes it a lot easier to roll your bikes on and they're not getting caught up in these tethers that tie the wheels down and then you've got two of these tether straps and I usually put them around one fork of each bike to secure the top portion of the bike onto this dividing frame that runs in between but 
The fact that you've got a lot of space in between the two bikes plus these little bumpers in between means the two bikes aren't rubbing up against each other and given it's so low, it's really easy to load them on. So let's get two bikes on. I'll show you how easy it really is. So the easiest way I found is just to drop this center support down so it's on the angle. Then you can easily wheel the rear bike in pop the frame back up and then you just ratchet down each wheel and just like our other bike rack I do tend to adjust the wheels around just so they're not the straps aren't tied on the spokes then you want to adjust the foam to wherever it needs to sit then we get this tether Put it around the fork. That will secure it all into place and now you can put the second bike on. Same thing, you just wanna strap down each wheel. I normally do the rear wheels first because then I can tether the fork once I'm up on that side. And just like that, the two bikes are on, they're nice and secure, and you're ready for your trip away. When you get to site, first thing we do is we pull the bikes back off, flip that middle divider down, and we're ready to set up. It's a really good, simple solution for carrying two bikes around. But really, what do you do if you want to carry more than two bikes? Now, in a perfect world, you'd fit a beautiful, nice long four bike carrier like this but unfortunately it's a little bit too long for this setup but that got me thinking and i think i've come up with a bit of a solution that you might want to consider so let's go into that what if i told you i've come across a proprietary bolt together solution that simply mounts onto your a-frame you can pull it off put it back on you don't need to do any modifications at all and it works a treat and that solution is here it's a coast to coast product and anyone that has Jayco camper trailers or caravans knows that Coast to Coast makes a lot of accessories that go onto the Jayco products. So this is the Coast to Coast A-frame mount. I've modified it a little bit to make it work on our Jayco journey. And I did an episode on that a few weeks ago. And that's what led me to this particular solution because the four bike rack we've got on our journey, there is no way it will work on the Swan at all. But it got me thinking, now that I've got this sort of solution, is there something that we can set up on this that mimics the actual advantages with the ball mount and might actually work lengthwise on this Jayco Swan. So let me take this off and I'll show you what the A-frame mount is all about. Now I put it on the table because it's a little bit heavy and it's easy to show here and I covered this off in my last video which was the 4 bike carry on our Jayco journey. So there's a lot more detail in the other video if you want to go and have a look at this but this is the Coast to Coast Travel Rack Pro A-frame mount. And it's a very sturdy bit of gear. I think it's about 995 millimeters long, which works perfectly on the camper trailer A-frame. Even mounted up the back, which is what I couldn't get done on the JK Journey. It's a quality, really heavy wall construction RHS tube. It's got this mast sort of hitch receiver here, which is similar to what you have on your tow bar, with this really good diagonal reinforcement on it and two holes here which accept the adjustable mast in. Most importantly, it's got an anti-rattle bolt here which is critical for doing up once you've got everything on to stop the rack itself swaying around. And to me, this is a really good bit of gear. And it's what makes this whole system work where it's just a simple bolt or clamp on solution onto the drawbar itself. Now the key component is this mast. And as you'll see here, it's got a number of different adjustment holes and more importantly, it's got just a standard tow ball sort of tongue on it to take a 50 mil tow ball. So you've got to buy your 50 mil tow ball, bolt that on, and then you've got this adjustable mast that goes up and down. This mast is typically twice as long. I've already shortened it down and it will typically slide in just like this. So it goes in, it's all held into place by this hitch receiver on the side, and then you've got two pins which are typically like what you have on your hitch receiver on your tow bar they simply go in lock into place and it's all really nice and stable but the most important factor with this is you can obviously adjust it up and down to suit whatever scenario you're trying to fit this onto 
And this is where I've been trying to get it to work on the Swan. Because it's obviously made to sit up like this. So it's got a little bit of height on it and you then adapt your bike carrier onto the top of it. So that's incredibly good if you're trying to put a tray style rack like what we've got on the journey and we're trying to get it over the top of a toolbox or in our case gas bottles or something like that. With the Swan, we don't really have anything there. We're just really tight on space. So I've come up with a bit of a solution on how to mount this, which I'll show you very shortly, but this comes with everything to fit it on. So you get the two U clamps and these two really heavy duty mounting blocks that go up under the A-frame and that secures it all into place. There's a little bit of trick if you're doing the mounting system like what we're doing here, to slide these U-clamps on. I find just get them nice and low and then you can lift them and pop them down over and they'll slide over your gas line if you've got the bayonet up the front. And then I find the handbrake cables will sit on the inside of them. So they've still got a lot of space in between and these sort of just hug the side of the frame rails. It's a really neat solution. So now I'll show you how it goes onto the Swan itself. Now in trying to fit this A-frame mount onto the front of the Swan, it was a little bit tricky to be honest and I couldn't quite get it working properly because you need to be mindful of the pins that come up for the bed support poles. And trying to get it to fit around that was a little bit tricky. In its proper orientation with this triangular piece facing up, it does actually fit quite well in front of the pins here and you would shorten the mast right down so that it doesn't need to protrude through this brace. That actually forms the jerry can holder in the standard setup on most of these Jayco camper trailers. The problem with that is that I didn't want to cut this down for the video and I wanted to see if I could fit it further back because as you can see here, there's a nice little hole in here that looks like you could get a decent mount working. So I flipped it upside down and I don't think there's any issue with that. It is extremely well built and braced and from a performance point of view, it's still operating pretty much the same. Keeps it really tidy, keeps it all nice and low and then you can put the mast in. You need to do that before you put it on obviously in this situation and you don't really need to adjust it because it's sitting at its lowest point it can possibly go. You will obviously chop the mast off to suit this installation and then the ball sits further forward. Now the advantage here is that that's distributing more load back towards the axle and, and while it's fairly minor that takes a little bit off your tow ball as well. The beauty of this is that you just lay it on, you put the U-bolts over, put the clamping piece underneath, bolt it all into place and it is done. You put your tow ball on and then fit your bike rack on and I'll show you how that works right now. And now to make all this work, I've got this Buzzy B bike carry here. And the most important factor to consider if you're looking around for a bike rack to work with the coast to coast A-frame mount is that it needs to be a ball mount. Now what that means is it's got this adapter here that secures onto a standard 50 mil tow ball. The advantage here is you can take this straight off and put it onto your tow vehicle without having to change a hitch over or anything like that. It's really, really adaptable. I was a little bit concerned, as you would have seen in the other video, that this clamp style mount wouldn't be all that secure, but once you put it on, it doesn't move anywhere. It's a really, really good handy bit of gear and it works extremely well. So let's get this on and then I'll show you what it's all about. And so to install it on, it's a simple case of clipping it over the tow ball and then screwing down the clamp. You want to make sure it's all nice and straight and true on the camper trailer. And then Buzzrack give you this tool and it's got a 19mm and a 17mm end and that generally means you don't need to carry any tools around to secure this into place. You use a 19mm end and down the bottom there's this bolt here. You simply tighten that up and that stops it moving from side to side. Dead easy and simple to do and then it's just a case of mounting your bikes on. Now you have a number of different supplies and the three main ones are obviously Buzzrack, Yakima and also Rhino have a really good four bike rack as well. If you're looking to use the A-frame mount, just make sure you buy the version that has a 50mm tow ball mount 
and you're pretty much ready to go. Now this rack is actually quite good because it only weighs 8.3 kilos. So if you work that with a cut down version of the A-frame mount rack, I'd imagine you'd be sitting around about 20 kilos, maybe a little bit more. And that's something you definitely need to consider when you're trying to fit four bikes onto the A-frame of a caravan or in particular a camper trailer. And I'll cover off that now. Now with the Jayco camper trailers, they typically have a payload, if you've got a single water tank, of around 300 kilos. So you imagine you're putting, say, 60 kilos worth of bikes onto the front of your camper trailer. That is going to consume a fairly decent portion of your payload. But if you're wanting to carry around four bikes, just consider that there will be offsets that you need to do. For example, you might be carrying around something else that's actually quite heavy to offset that load. And I think it's definitely worthwhile getting the whole setup weighed before you go anywhere to make sure you're fully legal. Now, the other thing to consider if you're loading up the A-frame like this is your tow ball weight because these obviously have a max tow ball weight, as does your tow vehicle. So all that needs to come into the equation if you're trying to carry around a number of bikes, or for that matter, if you're putting anything really heavy onto the drawbar of your caravan or camper trailer. But let's get into this and I'll show you what it's all about and why I've gone down this particular path. To start off with, the buzz rack was on special. I got it for just over $200. So for me, it was pretty good value in that I could try it out and see if it would actually work in this particular instance. I had a feeling it might, but there was always that little question mark around on whether or not the length of this would still work, particularly when you're in a jackknife situation. And I'll get onto that shortly as well, because that's another really important factor you need to consider when you're trying to load up these really short and compact A-frames. And I keep harping on about that, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And if you're driving along, you need to do a tight turn or even maneuver into a spot and you damage your tow vehicle, then that takes all the fun out of it. So you need to double check, triple check, and make sure everything's going to work. So before we go too far, and while I've still got the Ranger connected up here, I've quickly put one of our boys bikes on here. It's not the largest bike, but it is definitely bigger than Sam's smaller bike just to see what the impact is here. Now, first impressions are that it actually looks a lot better than what I first expected. I do think you've got a fairly good turning radius, and if anything, it's probably still slightly better than the Fiamma rack we've been running for years and years and years. So, I don't know, I think this actually probably will work as long as we can get all four bikes stacked onto this rack. But that's what it's made for, right? So let's uh, jackknife the Ranger and see what the clearances are really like. That's actually, pretty good and I wouldn't have thought you'd even go close to this. We're not on a full 90 degrees but you would rarely do that. It means you can do a fairly tight radius with the bikes on. To be honest the bikes further back might impede a little bit further but this is completely doable. Let me take you over to the other side and we'll have a better look. You can see we're on a fairly decent angle here and I probably wouldn't want to push it any further than that. Uh, you still obviously need to be careful that the wheel will move around, but once you've got it all strapped down properly and secured, that's not such an issue. I'm really, really surprised by this. Again, if you've got an extended drawbar, you'll be sweet with something like this, and you can probably get away with a slightly bigger rack as well. But we're trying to work with the standard here just to show you the confines and what you need to deal with and be aware of. So for me, the buzz rack with its green sort of theme works quite well with the swan because this is a green themed swan. So I went color wise, it all goes together and works pretty well. Now you'll notice it sits really hard up onto the boot area here. It actually lays back a little bit, which is an advantage here because we're utilizing the slope of the boot to move the bikes further back. So for me, that is a real advantage as well. Now, if I go around the other side, I'll show you another really good practical thing that allows you to use these, particularly on the Jayco camper trailers, because if you remove this pin on the side, it folds down so you can access the boot. And most importantly, you can roll the bed ends back over the top. You might be able to leave a few bikes on, but I'd suggest they're probably gonna clash with the front of the drawbar here. So you probably need to take them off every time you put the bed ends out. Now, obviously the ISI and the Grip Sport fold down also, and they've got a much better mechanism for doing that. But you're looking at a $1,500 cost over the top of this to get that luxury of it working a little bit better and having that engineering sort of thought into it. Because obviously those style ones sit way up over the top of the boot and give you a lot more clearance from that point of view as well. So 
there are, there are trade-offs with everything you want to do, but the fact that this folds down is really, really good because it means you don't need to actually remove it off the drawbar, particularly if you've got it locked on as well. But obviously you've got the advantage of being able to quickly disconnect this and remove it completely off the front of your camper trailer or caravan as well. So it works pretty well to be honest. Now let's put it up and see if we can load four bikes on because that's what I'm really, really curious about, how they'll actually fit on. And because it's a, a frame mount system, how the different styles of frames will sort of teeter-totter to allow four bikes to fit on the front of the camper trailer here. So let me have a little bit of a fiddle and then I'll show you how it all sort of works. Now the first thing I'm going to do is flick all these tabs down because I think they'll be easier to load the bikes in over the top. You can leave the back ones up because that will make it easier to reach over and secure the frame of the first bike. Now we're going to load the largest bikes up first. Now that didn't actually go too bad to be honest and as opposed to the tray style ones where you often need to secure the wheels in, you really could just leave this sitting here and it's not going to fall off. I would probably be tempted to actually strap it on, that way you know it's all nice and secure, but I'm going to put the second bike on now and you put that on in the opposite direction so they flip flop backwards and forwards so you don't have handlebars and bits and pieces clashing and just see how that works. Then we'll strap the two bikes down, get the other two bikes on and see where we're sitting. The real tough thing here with the big bikes is trying to play around with the configurations to get them all sitting on so they work with these really tight spacing and the triangulated sort of frame designs that you have on all the modern bikes these days. Now there is a way around that. You can actually buy a rod, which I'll put just here, and you can actually put that between the post on your seat and your handlebar post to straighten things out a little bit. So far I found in my little trial and errors that I've been trying to do is that most of the bikes will have to go on in the same layout so we don't have so many clashes but the pedals still do tend to clash which is something you don't have with the tray style either. They're generally a little bit further apart we don't need to worry about all this sort of thing. It's just a really tight fit. So let me try to get the other three bikes on. I'll come back, do a bit more of a summary and things to look out for and let's just see if they fit on to start off with. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to leave it at three bikes because Sands bikes are a little bit too small to fit on with this suspension setup on it that I can't slide it on and over properly. And I think that's where if I was going to run four bikes permanently on the front of the Swan using this rack, I would definitely buy a few of those straight bars so that you can level up the frame. So they would sit literally horizontally between the base of the seat there and the handlebar and then you can flip and flop them like what you're supposed to do. How I've managed to get it working here is to sort of have them all sitting in the same orientation because otherwise, because of this real rake on the frame, the handlebars clash with the wheels. And it's, it's, it's okay, but it's not great. But I think if you were fine tuning this setup to run it properly, you'd buy those accessories, get it to work, and it, it fits reasonably well, to be honest. At the moment, we're sort of, heavy off to the driver's side because we've got all the derailers and everything on this end. But if you flip flop them around, they'll sit pretty neatly, I think, and work fairly well. And, and again, it's a, it's a purpose-built rack for four bikes. So you can definitely get that to work. I'm just on a bit of a time crunch here and I haven't got the right bits and pieces to make it all work. But I'm more demonstrating the fact that you don't need to fabricate something up and there is a bolt-on solution that will fit onto the front of the Jayco camper trailers, which to me is actually pretty unreal. And I do think you can probably get this to work. It can fold down so you can access your boot, fold the bed over, and it will work pretty well. Now, a few little disadvantages and little things to be aware of that I would include here. And obviously this is amplified by the fact we've got all the bulky bits together. I would actually get some pool noodles and some of those Velcro ties 
and I'll put them in the description below and or bits of foam or something that you can use the Velcro tires on and I would put them in all the little tight parts where you've got clashes of frame because as opposed to the tray style one where the frames don't really hit each other these ones they definitely do but if you protect the frame while you're in transit just with those Velcro strips you can quickly take them off have a little uh, container that you put all these parts in including the tie down straps that go with this and that'll keep everything all nice and tidy, protect all your bikes while you're traveling, and it will work incredibly well. So anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. A lot of people wanted information on this rack, and a fair few were questioning me and asking, have I got a four by carrier option that fits on the front of these camper trailers as well? So I think we've ticked both of those boxes, and we've got two very workable solutions here. The Fiamar Carry Bike XLA is the best solution out there. Super lightweight, you can get them for about 250 bucks. You can easily put two bikes on and off without any drama at all. If you've got a vehicle that you might be able to fit another two bikes in, that's probably a better option so that you split the bikes and the load and the weight between the two vehicles as well. But if you are set on putting a four bike carrier on, at least we've got an A-frame mount that works incredibly well. It's got that 50 mil tow ball so that you can put a tow ball mount bike carrier onto it. You can swap it between vehicles and other than its real compact nature that makes it a little bit tricky to load, that is a workable solution as long as you check those weights and the turning circle to make sure everything sort of works. So let me know what you think about this and is four bikes viable on the front of a camper trailer? Now, if you haven't already, please like the video. That helps us out greatly. Put a few comments down below on what you think about these two racks or if there's anything in between. I thank you all for watching and as I always say, get out there, stay safe, have fun, and we'll catch you next time.